Speaker for Newton North Delta. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's uh, my pleasure to rise today in this House to speak in support of C41, the Act to implement a free trade agreement between Canada and the Republic of Korea. And, uh, Mr. Speaker, it's uh, whenever we're looking at free trade agreements, no matter which country they're with, it behooves the parliamentarians and those who are negotiating those to ensure the due diligence is done, the due diligence is done, and that the agreements that we end up with are good for Canada, but we also want them to be good for the other country as well, because that's how strong relationships are built in the wrong, uh, long run. On balance, this uh, trade agreement with a democratic, high standards country is a good deal for Canada and one that the NDP can, can support. South Korea is an established democracy with high standards for labor, labor rights, human rights, and environmental protections. It's large market that offers a significant opportunities for Canadian businesses to gain a foothold in important Asian markets and diversify our trade. And just so you know that we believe they are, you know, not everything is perfect, and uh, we will say that this agreement is not perfect. There are things we would have liked to have seen changed in it, but on balance, on balance, we believe that this is a good deal, and it will benefit Canadians and will benefit Korea as well. And one of the things that we often look at as the NDP, you know, unlike um, another party that sits on this side of the House, where when we see a free trade agreement being announced without seeing the details, that particular party said, we approve, we like it, us too. We actually believe in doing uh, the work of parliamentarians, actually studying what actually waiting to see what the deal is, reading it, studying it, and then trying to make it better before we go out and make grand pronouncements. And I think that's what uh, the people who elect and send us here expect of us. They expect us to do the kind of hard work that the NDP is prepared to do. And at this point, Mr. Speaker, let me uh, acknowledge the stoic work done by an amazing member of parliament from uh, Vancouver Kingsway who has taken on this file and has been very thorough and very balanced and very measured and very measured as he has looked at the policies, looked at the agreements that have been presented to this house and has put forward thoughtful amendments at committee and now that it's here has recommended to the caucus that after his thorough investigation, this is a good deal. That's the kind of, that's the kind of work parliamentarians expect from all parties, not the Me Too attitude of the party at the other end of this uh, house. And, uh, you know, uh, as you know, Mr. Speaker, as you know, Mr. Speaker, we don't uh, always agree with the government on the other side, or with our colleagues uh, at the other end. So when we're looking at, when we're looking at uh, free trade agreements, we actually have some criteria. And we examine free trade agreements against the criteria that we have established. And the first one being, is the proposed partner one who respects democracy, human rights, adequate environmental and labor standards and Canadian values. And if they don't have those rights quite yet, are they in a trajectory that is moving them towards human rights and labor rights and environmental rights? The second criteria, and my colleagues at the end of this, on this side, could actually learn from doing this kind of homework. Is the proposed partner's economy of significant or strategic value to Canada? all very, very important. Are the, the third one, are the terms of the proposed deal satisfactory? So we do have a very measured approach and I'm very, very proud of the way we do it. Now it is important to note, Mr. Um, Speaker, 
that uh, we did have some concerns with this uh, particular agreement. And I want it to be noted that once again at committee, it's the NDP that did their homework and did the hard pulling. It's the NDP, it's the NDP that moved amendments, that moved amendments uh, around our concerns, around our concerns about the investor state dispute settlement. And we were very, very concerned, but however, we were pleased, Mr. Minister, uh, Mr. Speaker, that in this case, unlike the Canada-China FIPA, this agreement does not tie this government's hands for 31 years or any government's and can be renegotiated or cancelled after six months. Unlike the FIPA, the Korean Free Trade Agreement has guaranteed transparency rules for ISDS tribunals. Hearings must be in public. And but we still expressed our concerns about that, but as you know, the other party said, me too, and were quite willing to live with that. We also know that we do have some major concerns around the auto industry. And uh, once again, it was the NDP, and only the NDP, doing the hard work that we as parliamentarians do, that actually took amendments at committee stage in order to strengthen uh, uh, protection for the auto industry. And I was interested in um, my colleague across the way, new to uh, Parliament, and welcome him to the House, who raised that question as if to say that we had abandoned the auto industry, when in fact it was the NDP members who were bringing forward amendments that would, um, that would further provide protection for the auto industry. And, you know, Ms. Mr. Speaker, I also have to go on to say that we do have serious concerns about other free trade agreements, but on balance we are prepared to live with this one because, you know, it does have a six-month uh, kind of um, an opt-out rule. But both CETA and the China FIPA have provoked widespread public concern in uh, Canada. I don't know about you when you go home, but I do know it's a topic I get asked about over and over again. And um, what people are feeling is that parliamentarians, and especially the government across the way, are giving too many um, Canadian jobs away and are not doing their due diligence. But I want to reassure you, uh, Mr. Speaker, that a new democratic government would pursue policies to strengthen the Canadian auto sector, and that would include policies that would encourage Korean automakers to locate production facilities right here in Canada. Decent paying jobs would assist Canadian auto products to better access the Korean and other Asian markets. And we would closely monitor non-tariff barriers and act quickly and effectively to resolve disputes. And of course, as with any relationship, it has to be nurtured and we would, we would utilize frequent trade missions to Korea to cement the relationships that have to be cemented. We realize, Mr. Speaker, that uh, this agreement with uh, Korea is a major agreement for us, and it does give us uh, an entry, an entry level into the uh, Pacific um, Gateway. And we also agree with the Canadian Chamber of Commerce and others that the Government needs to do more than sign tra trade agreements. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We need to more than sign trade agreements. We actually need to do our due diligence and make sure they will actually benefit Canadians and not put some of our sectors at risk. And uh, we must do more to promote Canadian exports as well. That's a major job. Attract investments and help Canadian companies penetrate the South Korean and other Asian markets. And, you know, uh, Mr. Speaker, as you know, uh, there, you know, the UFCW, one of our major public sector unions, has come out and spoken in favor of this uh, particular trade agreement because we can see the benefits for our fisheries industry, uh, whether it's lobster or whether it's uh, tuna or whether it's salmon, that we will make financial gains. 
But we as a government, we as a, the NDP, when we, and one day I hope to, when we do form government, we do know that we will work to strengthen this free trade agreement so it benefits everyone. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.